This is my Bible. It is the Word of God, and it is the will of God for my life. I am who the Word says I am. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ. I'm where the Word says I am, seated right now in Christ Jesus, in the heavenly realms, in the place of authority, dominion, and power. I have what the Word says I have. All the blessings of Abraham are mine, and I can do what the Word says I can do. I can do all things through Christ who gives me the strength. Today my mind is alert, my spirit is receptive. As I'm taught the Word of God, my life is changed for the better, and I will never be the same again. Amen. Man, God bless you. you. May be seated. I see folks here on leave, I guess, from active duty. God bless you. God bless you. Psalm 91 is true concerning you. Father God, keep them safe. Every, every member, every young man, every young woman from Faith Christian Center on active duty, keep them safe, Father God, in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? And if you have a Bible, we're going to pick up this morning in Mark chapter 7. We're in this series, The Miracles of the New Testament. What we're doing in 2023 is walking through the miracles of the New Testament, looking for patterns and principles. If God's people could learn to look for and then apply the patterns and principles they see in the miracles of the New Testament, they could live out their lives and hardly have an unmet need. The message today is Jesus heals a deaf and mute man, and this is New Testament miracle number 23 by our reckoning. Mark chapter 7, verse 31, Then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. There were some people who brought to him a man who was deaf and could hardly talk, and they begged him to place his hand on the man. After he took him aside away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears, then he spit and touched the man's tongue. He looked up to heaven with a deep sigh and said, Apatha, which means be opened. At this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly. And the word there, opened, Apatha, literally means the chain of his tongue was broken. Verse 37, Jesus commanded them not to tell anyone, but the more he did so, the, people, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, he said. They said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Now, speaking about this prophetically, Isaiah wrote in Isaiah 53, 3 to 6, Strengthen the feeble hands, steady the knees that give way. Say to those with fearful hearts, Be strong, do not fear, your God will come. He will come with vengeance, with divine retribution. He will come to save you. Then will the eyes of the blind be opened and the ears of the deaf unstopped. Then the lame will leap like a deer and the mute tongue will shout for joy. Water will gush forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. There was a book written decades ago. It was a devotional called Streams in the Desert, a wonderful devotional. And that's what we have and we live in, but I think too often we don't even know where we are in the timeline of God, and we don't walk in what God has provided for us. Number one, if you're taking notes, God loves you. He has and he will go out of his way for you. God loves you. He has and he will go out of his way for you. Verse 31, then Jesus left the vicinity of Tyre and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. God loves you and he has and he will go out of his way for you to see that you are saved, to see that you are healed, to see that you are blessed. The Decapolis was the region of the 10 cities and it was predominantly a Gentile area. If I remember right, it was east of the Sea of Galilee. Again, here we have an example of Jesus going out of his way to help people outside the covenant of Abraham, just like he did when he went to Jericho, literally a cursed place. I mean, look at what the Bible says. He left the vicinity of Tyre, that's modern day Lebanon, and went through Sidon down to the Sea of Galilee and into the region of the Decapolis. So just in a few words, it's telling us that he went from one area that was not people of Abraham 
to another area populated by people who were not descendants of Abraham. So God loves us and God has and God will go out of his way to be a blessing to us. Number two, anything God does, God does well. Say it out loud. Anything God does, God does well. Genesis 1:31. God saw that all he had made, God saw all that he had made and it was very good. So you have been made in the image of God. I think if there's anything that the church nationwide, worldwide ought to be emphasizing in 2023, it is that we are fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. And too many are subscribing to the agenda of marring the image. And there's many ways to mar the image, and if I got to talking about them, church attendance would go down. So I'm not going to do that. But this is the image of God. Male and female created he them. And we need to understand that what God has done, God has done well. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we need to rejoice in what God has done and be glad and grateful for what God has done and walk in and live in what God has done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You have been made in the image of God and you can rest assured that God made you well. You know, I, I used to make fun of Sue for being a health nut, but during the whole COVID scam, you know, I, I turned into a health nut, I guess. And so I get emails every not every day, but every week from certain physicians that are critical thinkers. And uh, so this one guy in particular, I, I read some of these articles. I don't really read the articles. I like read the headline and I read a little bit and then I move on to something else because I'm busy. But I'm just, every week now, I'm stunned. I am shocked. I am amazed at how we are fearfully and wonderfully made. It is staggering. It is truly staggering. And how all of these systems, you know, we just live our lives. We're not thinking about how it all works. But it is amazing how uh, obviously a genius architect designed all of this. It didn't just happen. And we didn't come out of some pond as a slug. I mean, it didn't, it didn't uh, happen by accident. There's no accident to it. Amen. And this is all some kind of nefarious, evil, wicked agenda to not give God his due. Say it out loud. I have been fearfully and wonderfully made. And what God does, God does well. Amen. You know, the word oops is not in the Bible. <laughs> the Lord never did anything or said anything and said, oops, I need a mulligan. So what God does is good and what Satan does is bad. So whenever you are sick in your body, God's desire is that you be perfectly well. You need to get this cemented into your thinking that God wants me well. God wants me blessed. God wants me whole. God wants me prospered. Say it out loud. God wants me blessed. God wants me healed. God wants me whole. And God wants me prospered. Amen. And remember, Jesus never one time healed someone partially. There's no example of Jesus healing someone partially. So let us speak over our lives today what the people said that day. He has done everything well. Say it out loud. Lift your hands. Say, he has done everything well. Done say it again. He has done everything well. Done Number three, God wants you well. I said God wants you well. In your spirit, that's salvation. In your body, that's healing. And in your finances, that's prosperity. John 10, 10, Jesus said, The thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I've come that they might have life and that they might have that life more abundantly. When we were pioneering this church in the hotel, I used to preach it this way. 
He, I, and, and I have come that they might have life to the max. Be blessed in every area of life. There's no point in being wealthy in your money and all your wives hate you and all your children hate you. Amen. There's no point in being rich and then being, having a diseased, broke down body. Right. He wants us to have life and he wants us to have life more abundantly. Amen. Say it out loud, blessed in my spirit, blessed in my, spirit. Blessed in my mind, blessed in my, mind. Blessed in my will, blessed, in my, blessed in my emotions, Blessed in my body and blessed in my finances. Amen. He, he has come that we might have life more abundantly. Number four, get your eyes and focus off men and get your eyes and focus on Jesus. I wish to God men everywhere would do this. Get your eyes and focus off men and get your eyes and focus on Jesus. Verse 33, after he took him aside, away from the crowd. Say it out loud, away from the crowd. You know, sometimes you can't do the work of God in the midst of a bunch of people because the bunch of people could be filled with naysayers. Amen. 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 After he took him aside away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. So Jesus is the healer. So don't put your trust in man. Put your trust in the son of man. Amen. Tell your neighbor, don't put your trust in man. Put your trust in the Son of Man. And by that we mean the Lord Jesus Christ. Number five, and we're going we're gonna to zero in here this morning. Number five, learn to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Number five, learn to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. See, back then, they had Jesus for three and a half years. Today, we have the Holy Written Word of God, and we have the Holy Spirit of God. Back then to get healed, people had to hear about Jesus, they had to find out where he was, and they had to get to him in order to be healed. Today we are healed by faith in the written word of God, but we also have the Holy Spirit who reveals the word to us so that we can understand and believe God's word. Jesus, at that time, was the only representative of the Godhead at work in the earth, and he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. If a person wanted to get to where the power was, they had to get to where he was. He was the only representative of the Godhead at work in the earth in those days. But Jesus went away. And Jesus said in John 16, 7, but I tell you the truth, it is for your good that I'm going away. Unless I go away, the counselor, the comforter will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So when Jesus got back to heaven, he sent the third person of the Godhead, the Holy Spirit, to minister in the earth. And the Holy Spirit has a tremendous advantage over the Messiah who dwelt and ministered among men for three and a half years. Because Jesus was limited to being in one place at one time, but praise God, the Holy Spirit is not limited to being in one place at one time. So we don't have to go anywhere to get to where the power is. I said we don't have to go, to go anywhere to get to where the power is. I mean, when I'm out praying in the morning, the Holy Spirit can be talking to me, and uh, you could be at home washing dishes, and the Holy Spirit talk to you, and somebody over in Africa, uh, they could be, you know, planting a tree in the backyard, and the Holy Spirit speak to them. And then over in India, somebody could be, some woman could be down by the river washing the clothes of the family and the Holy Spirit speak to her. I mean, the Holy Spirit can be, can be and is everywhere on the earth at all times. And yet most believers, if you could give them the choice to have Jesus, the Messiah, come back to planet earth, they'd prefer that. But when Jesus was on the earth, the only way you could receive from him, be healed by him, would be to find out, well, first of all, to hear, hear about him, then find out where he was, then go to where he was, find him, and then receive your healing by him. But we are actually in a superior time, and we don't even know it. 
I said, we're actually living in a superior time and we don't even know it. I mean, look at the language of Jesus. It is for your good that I am going away. Unless I go away, the counselor, the comforter will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. So today we... So today the Holy Spirit of God is the only representative of the Godhead at work in the earth. So when people reject the Holy Spirit, they reject God at work in the earth today. And so of course they have no miracles whatsoever in their meetings. They have no healing testimonies to share in their churches because they have rejected the only God at work in the earth today. For the new creation in Christ, power is always present everywhere. Say it out loud. For the new creation in Christ, power is always present everywhere. Now, why have we not seen this? In Athens, the apostle Paul preached in Acts 17, 28, for in him we live and move and have our being. Say it out loud. In him we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah. Are you getting this at all? This is why, you know, this morning I go out there and I got my flashlight while I'm praying. My, my constant companion, hallelujah, the Holy Spirit of God. You know, he's trudging around the laps with me. We, we, we go on vacation. There's a beach road in north of Miami. I like to walk and pray. I, I go over there and guess what? He's over there. We go visit Derek, Christina, and I walk up and down their driveway. The Holy Spirit is there. He's talking to me. How, we, why have we not seen this? Why have we not understood how blessed we are? Say it again. The power of the Holy Spirit is present everywhere all the time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> And, you know, I shouldn't repeat what the devil says, but one of the criticisms of, you know, poor old Pastor Gene is that I'm not very spiritual. Well, I, I've walked with God, and I've got his hand on me, Amen. and everything I put my hand to has been blessed, Amen. and I got the evidence and the fruit. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So I disagree with the premise because their premise is that that being spiritual is acting like a weirdo. I reject the premise. Amen. Although, although we're dealing with a passage where it was, a, it was a little odd. I mean, what would you think right now if I, I spit my hand and laid hands on you? I mean, you would think, well, that's odd. Yeah. We're going to get to that. Amen. Amen. We wouldn't know what to do. We wouldn't know how to get up, how to go to bed. We wouldn't, I mean, there's no way I could have done anything, any of this without my constant companion, the Holy Spirit of God. Amen. And trust him. And trust him. And trust him. March of 2020, we were all trying to get our bearings and understand what in the world was going on. The very next month, Holy Week Revival, I stood up here and I said some crazy things under the inspiration of my constant companion, the Holy Spirit of God. Now, people have trouble with it because they say, well, some of that maybe didn't make sense. We're not walking by sense. We're walking by, what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? We have the holy written word of God and we have the Holy Spirit of God who reveals, enlightens the holy written word of God to us. That's what we have and that is all we have. And so we learn how to, to spend time in that Bible. Jesus himself said, you search the scriptures for in them you think you have eternal life. So we search the scriptures, but we're not alone in that endeavor because he sent his Holy Spirit to enlighten those holy scriptures to us and give us revelation on those scriptures so we can gain understanding and have faith and walk in the revelation. But now while we're doing that, we don't have to have perfect understanding of everything, every moment, every step along the way.
but I have learned to trust him. And so now looking in the rear view mirror, it was all obvious, but it wasn't obvious in that 30, 60 day time frame. Now, why am I bringing all this up? Because it's not my smarts. It's not my intelligence. It's not my IQ. It's not even my gifting. It is this wonderful, beautiful, constant companion that Jesus has sent to us, and it's not exclusive to me. Any of us can know him and walk with him and fellowship with him and gain insight from him if we will understand this unbelievably wonderful gift that has been sent to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He leads us. He guides us. And a lot of people avoid him because you know what else he does? He convicts us. Oh, I don't want to, you know, and that's why I'm convinced some people don't pray because the Lord convicts them and the Lord tells them what to do. Look, he is my father. He is my shepherd. Hallelujah. He leads me beside the still waters. He leads me into the green pastures. So I, I'm not afraid of him. I'm not afraid of him leading me. I'm not afraid of him guiding me. I mean, we sat in a meeting this week, this guy, you know, supposed to be a smart guy, older than me, supposed to be a smart guy, telling us all about, you know, wonderful doctors and wonderful hospitals and wonderful this and wonderful that. And, you know, he's uh, fighting the big casino. And I'm thinking, it just seems to me to be easier to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit Amen. rather than let somebody experiment on me. And then when they experiment on you and you got problems, well, now you got to go back for experimental B, C, D, E, F, and G. Right. Seems easier to me to just study the scriptures, follow the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. And if I, if I run into a speed bump, just believe God, amen. Get it, get, get, speak to the mountain and get the mountain to move, amen. And just keep trucking on down the road. Amen. Oh, pastor, that's simplistic. <laughs> get your eyes and your focus off man and get your eyes and your focus on the son of man yes. hallelujah. hallelujah and he sent his wonderful beautiful holy spirit to lead us and to guide us and to give us revelation on the written word of god amen, amen. amen. i said amen if you wanted to get to where the power was then, you had to go to where Jesus was today. All you have to do is reach out in faith and receive it. Say it out loud. I believe I receive, I believe I receive. healing in my body, in my body. From, the my from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. Of my feet. I believe I receive wisdom I receive. and understanding I on how to handle money. I believe I, I believe I receive wisdom and understanding on how to manage my family. Thank you, Father God, for this wonderful, beautiful gift you have sent to us, the Holy Spirit of God. See, I just learned how to walk in this and not act like a weirdo. Listen, a lot of, a lot of people act like a weirdo because they never learned how to walk in it. It's, it's compensation. It's compensation. You know, if I, I'm 67 years old and I've walked around the equivalent of walking around the earth two and a half times and I got no pain in my body and all my needs are met and all my bills are paid, amen, I, I'd say something's working. Amen. Something's working, amen. right? So I don't need to act hysterical. I don't need to swing from a chandelier. Man, I'm cool. You look up cool in Webster's Dictionary, it's got my picture in there. I'm cool. I don't have to act weird. I don't have to act strange. I don't have to act like I'm having a hysterical fit. See, the, the Holy Spirit of God has been misrepresented 
just like Jesus has been misrepresented. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't want to embarrass the Lord with my conduct. I said, I don't want to embarrass the Lord with my conduct. That's why Jesus said in Mark eleven twenty four. 24, Therefore I say unto you, what things serve you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive them. Say it out loud. Tell your neighbor, believe that you receive them. Receive. Tell the neighbor on the other side, believe that you receive them. Receive. And you shall have them. Our problem is we just don't want to follow the written instructions of the Word of God. People will do a GoFundMe. People will do a prayer chain. People will do a Daniel fast. They'll do anything and everything except the Word of God. Believe you receive. Speak to the mountain. People don't want to do what he said. Say it out loud. I, say it out loud. I am healed, I am healed. Right, now, right now from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet because I believe I receive healing right now from the crown of my head to the soles of my feet. All right, so what if every time some negative junk came out of your mouth, you said that instead? Fred Price used to say that he, would, he, he was such a complainer, he would give organ recitals. Somebody would ask him how he felt. He'd say, well, my, my kidneys hurt, my liver hurts, my stomach hurts, and my, you know, liver recital, get, I mean, uh, uh, organ recital, get it? He was being facetious. We have, to, we have to be doers of the word of God even with regard to what we say. Mark eleven twenty three and 4, he told us some things to say, some things to do. Power is always present everywhere for the believer. That's why Jesus said, Matthew 18, 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Power is always present everywhere for the believer. There's a power at work in this room right now in this very moment. But if we don't perceive it, if we don't receive it, it will do us no good. That power, that power of God, that power of the Holy Spirit is always present everywhere for the believer. Say it out loud, I have everything I need right now in this very moment. For in him we live and move and have our being. If we just knew this and knew how to tap into it, there would never be any sick among us at all. In this room right now, there is power to deliver from every sickness. In this room right now, there is power to deliver from every demon. In this, power, in this room right now, there is power to deliver from anything that hinders or binds. The power of God, the power of the Holy Spirit is present everywhere all the time. For in him we live and move and have our being. The power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God is all around us all the time. Yet we fret, and we struggle, and we worry, and we cry, and we complain, all while our wonderful, beautiful, heavenly Father wonders why we don't just tap in and receive his power, the power that he has made available for his sons and daughters. Are you hearing me? But I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, if we can learn how to tap into that power that is everywhere present, then, bless God, we can be healed and we can put that power to work for us and win others to a saving knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said in John 16, 12, I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear, but when he, the Holy Spirit, comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but he will speak only what he hears, and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. So today, God works by his holy written word, and today, God works by his Holy Spirit. And in the same way, it was important for people in Jesus' day to cooperate with how Jesus wanted things done. It is just as important in our day that we cooperate with the Holy Spirit on how the Holy Spirit wants things done. 
And keep in mind, God can do anything he wants to do except violate his own word. Say it out loud. God can do anything God wants to do except violate his own word. I mean, why in the world did Jesus do what he did? After he took him aside, Mark 7, 33, away from the crowd, Jesus put his fingers into the man's ears. Then he spit and touched the man's tongue. Well, the man was a deaf mute. So he had two problems. He, he needed his deafness healed and he needed his muteness healed. So Jesus put his fingers in the man's ears. Well, that makes sense, right? It was a kind of laying on of hands. But then Jesus spit and touched the man's tongue. Kind of odd. But think about it. He was the son of God. I'm sure even his spittle had anointing in it. Amen. I would imagine there are people here this morning and uh, you'd give a serious offering for some Jesus spittle. I said, I imagine there are some people here this morning and you've got an ailment here and you got an ailment there and you would give a serious offering for some Jesus spittle. And we kind of blow this off. Well, that was Jesus and 2,000 years ago and it's in a book. Well, what if I came out there and did it right now with you? It's odd. Tell your neighbor, it is, it's odd. Tell the neighbor on the other side, it's odd. Then he spoke a word of command as we have seen him do over and over and over in the course of these miracles. He looked up to heaven and with a deep sigh said to him, Epaptha, which means be opened. And here's a verse the world loves to make fun of. God works in mysterious ways, his wonders to perform. But you know what? That might be in a hundred Hollywood movies, but that is not in the Bible. We've heard it over and over and over our entire lives, but it's not in the Bible. You know what the Bible does say about the ways of God? Isaiah 55, 8, 9, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord, as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And before we allow anything, before we allow people to criticize anything, we need to look at the evidence. I said, before we allow people to criticize anything, we need to look at the results. And what was the evidence here? Verse 35, at this, the man's ears were opened, his tongue was loosened, and he began to speak plainly, loosened. Literally, the chain of his tongue was broken. As the world says, the proof is in the pudding. So the man was healed in both areas where he needed healing. His deafness was here, healed, and he could hear, and his muteness was healed, and he could speak. Not just that, speak plainly. God does sometimes do things in unusual ways, and while we evaluate everything by the word, we have to be careful saying, this is God, or that is not God. I was greatly disturbed during the short revival in Asbury, Kentucky, and how Christians were posting on social media that God couldn't do this, and God couldn't do that, so the revival was false and not of God. Why do people, who, who in the world do people think they are to say what, what God can and cannot do? It is a whole nother level of arrogance. Amen. Say it out loud, God can do whatever God wants to do, except violate his own word. He can do whatever he wants to do. Amen. Amen. I mean, if he wanted for some reason the sun to rise in the west tomorrow morning, God can do whatever God wants to do except violate his own word. So who is man? Who are people to say, well, God cannot do this and God cannot do that, or God ought to do this, or God ought to do that, or it ought to be done this way, or it ought to be done that way. That is exactly what Calvinists and cessationist Christians did when they badmouthed that revival in Asbury, Kentucky. But Jesus said that to, to attribute the work of God to Satan is blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, and it is unforgivable. Literally unforgivable. Number six, the people went and told it everywhere. They went and told it everywhere. Verse 36, Jesus commanded them to not tell anyone, but the more he did so, the more they kept talking about it. People were overwhelmed with amazement. He has done everything well, they said. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. 
So even, even though Jesus told them not to do so, the people went and told of his wondrous works everywhere. So why in the world did Jesus keep telling the people, the recipients of these miracles, we've seen this over and over and over now in these miracles of the New Testament, why did Jesus keep telling them to not tell it? Well, because he knew that eventually, because of envy and jealousy over the miracles and because of envy and jealousy over the crowds that the Jews eventually were going to put him to death. And that's why he came, to be lifted up so that all who look upon him would not perish but have everlasting life. But he didn't want to go too soon. He didn't want to go before his time. And all we had with him was three and a half years. He didn't want that shortened. But they could not help themselves, and they told it, and they told it, and they told it, and they told it, and that's why we're, we're living in the mess we're living in, because modern Christians have not been telling it. I said modern Christians have not been telling it. So the people told it, declaring what Jesus has done. See, we have the answer, and people need to declare what God has done in their lives and invite and bring people to church. Now today... What do we have today? We have the holy written word of God and we have the Holy Spirit of God who gives us revelation on the holy written word of God. And how are we healed today? We are healed by faith in the written word of God. Say it out loud. We are healed today by faith in the written word of God. Now, I've told this story repeatedly, and I'm not going to tell the whole story, but many years ago, I damaged my right shoulder lifting a suitcase stupidly, and uh, I used Mark 11, 22 to 24 to get it healed. I'd almost totally have it healed, then I'd re-damage it. I went through this process two or three times. Wednesday night, we were talking about Luke 18, the parable in Luke 18. Jesus said, verse 18, 1, Luke 18, 1, men should always pray and never give up. That's the point of the parable. But how many times have we heard sermons likening the unjust judge to God? That's not the point of the parable. The point of the parable is given in verse 1, men should always pray and never give up. So, Jesus was not painting God as the unjust judge, and Jesus was not teaching us that we have to harass the heck out of him to, to try and force him to give us what we need. See, that just automatically puts God's people in a wrong mental and spiritual posture, and it puts them in a place where they think they're going to receive from the Lord, and they don't. The point of the parable was men should always pray and never give up. So I went through this process. This was months and months and months and months and months. And every time, and the last time I re-damaged it, oh my gosh, I really, really messed myself up. I was bowling with Derek and Christina and their family. And when my son-in-law throws a bowling ball, you would think it was a bazooka. And I'm a guy. And you know, this whole guy thing is you can't really be shown up, right? And so, you know, I thought, well, I can throw the ball as hard as he can. And so here we go. And I mean, and then, you know, along about whatever it was, eighth or ninth, what do they call those frames? Yeah, I thought, I am really messed up. But you know what? I couldn't quit. Not this proud man, so man, I just kept right on through it, hurling that ball. And you know, every time I had to throw two for a frame, I thought, oh, Lord. Anyway, so I was embarrassed. But my wonderful, my beautiful. See, I'm going to tell you a secret about God you may not know. He knows everything anyway, so there's no point in being embarrassed in front of him. He knows everything anyway, so you're not going to tell him something he's never heard, or you're not going to reveal to him some secret about you that he doesn't know, because he knows everything anyway. So, you know, next morning, I, I got out there in the morning, I'm praying, I said, Father, I, I'm back. <laughs> and you know what I did, and now I got to start all over. 
Man should always pray and never give up. And so I just kept on. Thank you, Father God. I believe I received healing in my shoulder. No, I'd say it this way. Thank you, Father God. My shoulder's healed, totally and completely healed because I believe I receive healing in my shoulder. Mark 11, 22, 23, 24. Every day. And I mean, I'm telling you. Sometimes, you know, something would happen. You reach out and you're thinking, And I communicated to an orthopedic surgeon friend of mine, practices in Atlanta. He works on the Falcons and the, the Braves. And uh, I said, I might have to come and see you. He, he gave me the links. He said, here's what to do. And I, I went back to my father and I said, you know, that, that'd be a horrible admission of defeat on my part. I don't want to do that. I just kept praying. Men should always pray and never give up. Amen. We're in Miami one morning in January, a couple of years back, and I don't know why. I did this. I didn't have the, uh, the clock set. I didn't have the alarm on. I woke up, and I went like that, and I thought, huh, <laughs> totally, completely, 100% healed. There are people here this morning, and you've allowed the devil to whip you because you did dumb stuff, and you brought trouble on yourself. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because Psalm 107.20 says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them Amen. of their destructions. Amen. Amen. There are people being healed right now. Amen. Right now, the power of God is here right now. The presence of God is here right now. The Spirit of God is here right now. He sent His Word and healed them and delivered them of their destructions. The destructions they caused. Because anybody here a parent? Let me see your hand if you're a parent. Do you hold grudges against your own children? No, you might hold grudges against somebody else's children, but you don't hold grudges against your own children. Amen. Any, anybody here this morning, a parent? Let me see your hand. If your children or one of your children's done some dumb stuff, let me see it. Come on now, I got my hand up. Well, do you, do you hold it against them? No, and if it was in your power, if it was in your power, you would wipe away the results of what they did to bring harm to themselves if you could wipe it away. And that's what that word means. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Amen. Stuff you might have done, you didn't know you were doing it and you didn't know the, 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 the havoc that it would wreak, but you did it, And but I came to bring... This word to you this morning, he sent his word and healed you and delivered you from all your destructions. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Shout out loud three times, it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Shout it again three times, it's done. It's done. It's done. It's done. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. And it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when we see him, we shall be like him. But see, in this meantime, in this meantime, in him, we live and move and have our being. Hallelujah. 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 Let's bow our heads. You may be here this morning and you've never made Jesus Christ your Lord and Savior, but you'd like to do so this morning. We're talking about healing. We're talking about the miracles of Jesus. But faith in God doesn't begin with healing. Faith in God doesn't begin with prosperity. Faith in God begins by making Jesus 
the Lord and the Savior of your life individually and personally. John chapter 3, Jesus said you must be born again. He didn't say it was a good idea. He didn't say it was highly recommended. He said you must be born again. In Revelation 3, he said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice, I will open the door. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and fellowship with him and he with me. So the work's done. So we have to open the door. We have to invite him into our lives. How many this morning would say, Pastor, I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be forgiven of my sins. And I don't know if you've ever prayed that prayer or not. Because there are people and they have some memory of being in church. They have some memory of church participation, but they, they have no recollection of ever praying that prayer. Making Jesus Christ the Lord and the Savior of their lives individually and personally. It has to be something you remember. It has to be something that you did. It has to be an action that you took. The Bible says, all who call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all come to a saving knowledge of his son. How many this morning would say, Pastor, I want to make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. I want to be forgiven of my sins. I want to be included in this prayer. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up. Lift it up high enough to where I can see it. Pastor, that's me. Pray for me. I want to be born again. I want to be saved. I want to give my life to God. I want to know this, this God you've been talking about it sure seems a lot nicer than the one I've heard about before. Amen. And I don't say that to be facetious. God has been misrepresented. Thank you so much. Others? How many others? Pastor, this is it. I want to cross that bridge of faith and give my life to Jesus. I want to be saved. I want to be born again. There may be others here this morning and you're backslidden. You're not living for the Lord like you once did. You told God that you loved him and you'd live for him and you meant it when you prayed it. But over the passing of time, you, you got snagged back up in wrong relationships and old habits and doing things the old way and you're not living for the Lord like you promised him you would. You're not living for the Lord like you once did. The word says in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all of our for of all our sins. He restores us to our fellowship with him. He's wonderful. He's forgiving. He's gracious. He's kind. He's merciful. How many this morning would say, Pastor, I'm away from God. I'm backslidden, but I don't want to remain in a backslidden condition. Pray for me, Pastor. I want to recommit my life to God. I want to make it right and live for him from this day to my last day. If that's you this morning, wherever you are, lift a hand up, lift it up high enough to where I can see it. Thank you. Any others? Everybody in the room, let's stand. I want to give an opportunity for people to uh, be prayed for this morning. If you raised your hand for either invitation, I want you to take your possessions in hand so you're not thinking about your stuff. Just take your stuff and grab your stuff up and bring it with you. But I want you to step boldly into the aisle and join me here at the front. If you raise your hand for either invitation, be bold about it. You know, the world, we saw last month, the world's crazy about being bold about the crazy stuff they believe in. Well, we can be bold about what we believe in. Amen. Amen. So if you raise your hand for either invitation, be bold about it. Step out. Join me here at the front. There, I'm sure there are people watching online and they want to be included in the prayer. We're going to let them be a part of the prayer. Amen. Amen. Any others, you're welcome to come. Praise God. For the sake of this young man and anybody watching online who wants to commit or recommit their lives to Christ, let's pray this prayer together out loud. Father God, I come before you in the name of Jesus, and I ask that you would forgive me, wash me, cleanse me, purify my heart, take out of my heart any bitterness, any unforgiveness, anything that would hinder me in my walk with you. I make Jesus the Savior and the Lord of my life. I confess with my mouth, Jesus is Lord. And I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead, Father God. And I thank you for not counting my sins against me, but for receiving me unto yourself and into your family. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
Amen, amen, amen. God bless y'all. People watching online, God bless you. Amen. The days are short, and we need to live for the Lord every day. Amen. God bless you. We love you. God bless you, sir. God bless you. If you'd go with Mr. Jeff Hughes, we're going to put a book in your hand and get you right back in the service as quick as we can. Amen, amen, amen. Well, you may wonder why sometimes I chuckle. <laughs> I love it. I've been doing this a while, and I love it. I was standing right there, and, you know, I, I had trouble standing. I love it. In him, we live and move and have our being. People have no idea. They have no idea. I'm not going to do it just to do it, but I'm going to do it here as led by the Holy Spirit of God one of these Sundays. I could have the piano stop. I'm not, going to I'm not telling you to stop. But in moments, I could fill this room with the presence and the power of God by singing to Him. You don't even know the power you have. You don't even know the gift you have. And you know, we fret and we worry and we struggle and we don't even know who we are in Christ. You can get up in the morning and uh, don't start out with your requests. Don't do that. Be like David. I enter his gates with thanksgiving and I enter his courts with praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And uh, there's great power in singing to him. I don't know why that is, but there is. Hallelujah. And get to know him. He's your father. Hallelujah. I love it. You know, I was born again in a full gospel church 62 years ago. And, and I'm not walking by feelings. I'm not. I'm walking by the word. But that doesn't mean feelings aren't wonderful. You know, same thing in my relationship with Sue. I'm, I'm, I, I gave my word. August 7, 1976, I'm walking by that word. But the feelings are nice. And so sometimes I'm in the middle of the message and you'll hear me chuckle. He's with me. He surrounds me. He loves me. Hallelujah. His anointing is upon us. Hallelujah. And I'll tell you something else. The more you acknowledge him, the more presence of him you will have in your life. Amen. And I think this whole thing of full gospel people acting like weirdos has been an agenda of Satan to actually diminish the working of the Holy Spirit in the world today. You know, I was going to say nobody wants to act like a weirdo, but the whole month of June was that. So I guess being a weirdo for the devil is okay, but being a weirdo for God is frowned upon. But I, I'm not talking about being a weirdo, but I do enjoy the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. I give him the credit, the glory, and the honor. Every, every good decision I ever made was him. Every bad decision I ever made was me. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But he's so kind and he's so gracious and he's so loving. Even when we make bad decisions, he'll help us get back on track. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There it is. Someone here this morning came to hear this. He restores the years the locusts have eaten. Amen. And there are, there's someone here this morning and, and, and you're grieving over what you've allowed the devil to do in your life and the wreckage that he has caused. But the word of God says that he restores the years the locusts have eaten. 
So if you'll follow him, the leading of the Holy Spirit of God, he'll put you on an intercept course to where you can be, where you would be if you had never got off course in the first place. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift both hands and say, thank you, Father God, for your precious Holy Spirit. He is loving. He is gracious. He is kind. He leads me beside the still waters, and he leads me into the green pastures. Hallelujah. Thank you for the gift of Jesus in the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah.